In this video, we are going to be looking at external information. Now, external information is something which is very, very important in P5 that you don't really get in the F5 paper. In the F5 paper, most of the information that you get is from inside the company. If you remember when you did variances, for example, we had standard costs. Where had they come from? Inside the company. The management accountant generates what they think the standard cost should be. This is how much material you should use. This is how much labour you should use. This is what it should all cost. It's an internal thing. When you do your variances, you then compare the standard with the actual. Where's the actual figures come from? Inside the company, it's from our financial accounting records. This is how much we actually spend. So F5 is all about inside the company. P5, on the other hand, needs to include external information. Now, external information is very, very, very important. It's got some major uses in P5, but it has got some limitations. The limitations particularly get tested quite a lot. So the uses that we have. One of the things that your organisation, my organisation, most organisations do is they compare actual performance versus budget, which is a fairly standard way of doing things. And it's obviously quite a useful thing to do. However, there is a problem. And the problem is that in P3, you learned about what's called a competitive advantage. What is a competitive advantage? Remember, every organisation needs a competitive advantage. A competitive advantage means being better than others. It does not say being better than budget. It's being better than others. So every year a company beats its budget. Does that mean it's doing well? Well, not if it's worse than all of its rivals, it doesn't. It won't get any customers simply because it can beat its budget. So at some point, if we really want to be a successful company, we need to start comparing our performance with other companies. And that's called external benchmarking, which comes in a lot in P5, particularly in question one. In question one in P5, you are often comparing one organisation with another to see how they are doing. Are they worse than somebody else? Are they better than somebody else? So external benchmarking is very, very useful, but it's got some problems which you need to be aware of in the exam. First of all, where does the information come from? Who would be the best person, sorry, the best company to benchmark yourself against? Well, your rivals would be a sensible one to compare yourself with. So how are you gonna get their figures? What are you going to do? Are you going to go to your rivals and say, will you please share all your confidential internal information with us? I think you're going to have a problem with that. There are ways it can be done. And in the exam, to make it easier, often the examiner simply says they have allowed you to have limited access. So they've allowed you to have some numbers. But in real life, that would be a big problem. Let's assume that we have persuaded another company to give us some information. For the purposes of this little lecture, we're an accountancy college, so let's assume that we have persuaded another accountancy college to share some information with us. Now, they might be teaching MBAs. So although they do accountancy, they mainly do finance MBAs. They perhaps um, have been around for 60 or 70 years. They perhaps are internationally known. In other words, they're very different to us. It could well be you've got there, they're in a different sector. MBAs are not the same as training ACCA. It's a different market, which means the numbers will tell you different things. The profit margins will be different, for example. Different ages. Often in the exam, you get young companies versus established companies. Young companies often will have more difficulties. They will be spending more money on certain things, like, for example, marketing. 
a young company that people don't know much about has to spend more money on marketing than an established company that people already know. The size of an organization. In a lot of industries, you get economies of scale. So a large organization can do things more cheaply than a small organization. It does not mean the small organization is bad. It does not mean they're being run poorly. It's simply their other company is bigger and they get these benefits. So we have to be very careful who we compare ourselves with. The generic strategy. For example, when I did the introduction, I talked about a luxury car manufacturer versus a mass market car manufacturer. So if you are working for the luxury car manufacturer and you are saying, what is the cost of each car? The production cost of each car is $75,000, making that number up. Let's compare ourselves with a mass production car and the cost of that is $10,000. Oh, we are too expensive. We must do something about it. We must slash our costs to $10,000 per car. That would be a completely stupid thing to do. Yes, your costs are more because it's a different generic strategy. It's a luxury car, not a mass market car. Now, what you often get in the exam is you often get a situation where you cannot actually compare these very easily. So you've been given two organisations and actually you can't compare them because they're in different industry. We've had public sector and private sector. You've had loads of different differences between them. So it is useful to compare one organization with another, but it's also useful just to remember that sometimes it's not as obvious. Just because the numbers are different does not mean one company is better and the other company's worse. It might just mean that they're different.